Start by cloning, then make install. Okay, now type meta x el paso. I can put in some keywords, let's say Reddit. Uh, it's asking me to authenticate with GitHub. I say yes. I say authorize. Authentication succeeded. It says after verifying, press D for done. Now it's asking me the same for GitLab. I say yes. Authentication succeeded. Go back, press D for done. All right, so now it gave me the first 10 uh, Emacs list results for Reddit, and that's great. Uh, it will only give you results for GitHub because GitLab's search functionality, I believe, needs some work um, on their end. So, um, but you could still, uh, even though you can't search there, you can specify a repository in GitLab. Um, El Paso. Uh, so, here's a GitLab repository. I have to specify the owner and the name, and that'll pull right up. I can drill down, much like package. ELs interface, I can browse um, the home page. Um, yeah, and I can I can install. Uh, well, I already have Math Preview installed, but I can reinstall it. And it'll ask me, and I say yes. And it will dutifully reinstall the package. OK, OK, big whoop. Um, now we all envision a future where package authors will just write their packages, and they can disseminate it to the world without having to go through some central authority. And so let's like let's give that a shot. Um, let's pull up. Let's let's do this on GitLab. So um, we're going to write a test package. Um, how do I do this? Uh, now I fast forwarded a bit. I've created the package. It's an empty package. Um, and now the uh, the test is whether it can pass um, package buffer info. And it can't uh, because you know the package lacks a version. So we have to um, adhere to package.el's dictates version 0.1.0. And that succeeded. Uh, oh. now, now, some packages are just a single file, like not not dog .el. Um, Some Most packages, though, will require like other files. So uh, th the goal is to have the recipe built into the Git repo. Um, and I've had that here uh, in a file called .recipe, which is in your standard ELPA or MELPA format. And here the added wrinkle is I've added, uh, I'm going to uh, include not hot dog star.el and a subdirectory called not hot dogs, which uh, you'll see, uh, let's see, Jared, Jared. You'll see that um, not hot dogs has a file inside it called include me. So uh, the proof will be in the pudding when we reinstall via El Paso and see that the uh, package now has this file called include me as part of the package. Um, you specify reinstall. Let's move my face so we can see the button. <coughs> and, um, and we'll see that, in fact, um, there's now a subdirectory called not hot dogs. And inside that directory is including me. Great. So uh, that's the idea is that uh, you can have a recipe, sorry, you can have a elist package and not have it register with some central authority that you merely need to follow some rules, you know, the rules of El Paso, such as they are, and you will immediately disseminate your package. Uh, in the most discreet way possible. OK, now what else to talk about? So one nice benefit of sort of unplugging from the matrix is you can set your package archives to nil. Uh, let's see, customize option package archives. Um, most people will have these two uh, package archive operators in their package archive package ar archive variable. Um, and, and you can delete these. And, and so, now, uh, so now your package archives is effectively nil, say for future sessions. OK, and this is really nice, because now, uh, every time you call this packages, uh, it returns it an instant. In fact, um, let's try to call it like five times in a row. And we'll see that, well, it took two and a half seconds. Let's try it again. It's not super fast. But you should try it with your settings of package archives and see how long something like benchmark run five on this packages takes. I believe it takes more than 10 seconds. OK. Oh, and the other thing is uh, El Paso will get the version right. So um, you'll see that I have a lot of packages that still have the wrong version from Melpa. I haven't had, I haven't bothered to rectify the versions, but we'll see that we, we can uh, meta x El Paso um, a. Apparently, this package is called a, <coughs> and uh, it's here, a.el, and uh, as as El Paso does, it will install directly from 
uh, in this case, GitHub, and uh, we'll do a reinstall. But we'll first we'll note that the version is sort of incorrect. It's like some date stamp that uh, Melp imposed, and, and we'll do a reinstall on A. And uh, right, and so it corrected the version. El Paso corrected the version to the semantic version that uh, the author of A intended. OK. People wonder, what's the big deal about the versions? Well, it wasn't so long ago that someone uh, obsolesced, someone uh, updated Dash, the, Dash, the very popular Dash library, um, to obsolesce a sub sublibrary called Dash Functional. And uh, he sort of went around the horn uh, visiting various uh, Git repositories, like mine, saying, you know, uh, can, you, can you update your Dash um, package require from 2.16 to 2.18? But we both understood that this actually, for most people, does nothing. Because you know, Melpa's uh, imposition of their ginormous, uh, of their huge version, the version reflects the timestamp, will basically mask this minute bump from 2.16 to 2.18. So by, by using semantic versions, I think we can. There's, there's a lot to be said for using semantic versions. Finally, uh, you know, just another side benefit of El Paso for not using a central archive is it wasn't that long ago that um, someone try to wrest control of the origami package, the fairly popular folding package for Emacs uh, called origami. He tried to wrest control of the listing at Melpa away from the original author, who you know, had every right to refuse, and he did. And uh, what I'm saying is that you know, this is one of the drawbacks of having a singleton archive. Is, you know, that singleton archive can only, can only assert, um, can only admit one listing. With El Paso, both can coexist peacefully. Uh, a typical user might look for origami. And we, you know, and we can see that both um, the original origami.el and the irascible upstart uh, origami.el that was updated 6.2 days ago and is sort of um, the more enthusiastic updater of origami, uh, they can both uh, be represented on El Paso.